In this lesson, we'll be looking at atrial flutter. Now, atrial fibrillation was a irregular, chaotic, unorganized contraction of the atrial tissue. Atrial flutter, while it also beats rapidly, is regular and consistent. So that's one of the primary differences that we're going to talk about next. Now with atrial flutter, we have another re-entry pattern happening here where there's only one area of irritation, which is very different than atrial fibrillation, where there were multiple areas of irritation. So you will see the difference with atrial flutter is that we will have a consistent pattern of those P waves and we call these F waves. And we see those here, they have the same shape or similar shape throughout. So in this case, we will be able to count our atrial rate. In comparing this with normal sinus rhythm, we can see the changes are obvious. It looks pretty regular, but those P waves in between each QR, QR and S wave are no longer round and upright. In fact, they kind of have what we call a sawtooth appearance. You know, if you were to take a saw, that's what these look like here is the, the teeth on the saw. We would count how many of these saw teeth that we see in between each QRS complex. So one, two, three, four, and we would make this as a four to one conduction, four P waves to every QRNS. If we compare this to atrial fibrillation, I want you to see the difference. So both of these rhythm strips or both of these arrhythmias are being driven by the tissue in the atria. And we can see in the atrial fibrillation, we see that that fine fibrillatory waves, that chaotic pattern, the irregular QRS contraction, and how that is very different in the atrial flutter in that we can see P waves, they just don't look round and upright, which lets me know the SA node is not responsible for those contractions. When we look at our characteristics and measuring our waveforms for an atrial flutter, we can see that the regular atrial rhythm and the regular ventricle rhythm will be apparent. Now it may also be irregular. More often in my experience, I've seen where it's a fairly consistent conduction or a minor difference between a few beats. The atrial rate is between 250 and 450 beats per minute. So if this, if we were to count this, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, you can see it's already at 120 and not even halfway through. So you would count all of those all the way across. The P waves are erratic flutter waves, sawtooth. We're unable to determine a PR interval. We are able to measure our QRS. We cannot do a QT and our ST segment is uh, undistinguishable. So here we have that single area of focus. And I like in this, here's my example for people who are trying to explain this to others. If you've ever been a parent shopping with kids, you've likely come across yourself or witnessed a child in the store going, mom, 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 mom. And finally the parent going, what? That to me represents the atrial flutter. You've got this child pulling on your coat, mom, 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 what? QRS contraction, P waves, mom, 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 what? QRS contraction. So I like to use that as an example to help explain to people just what's happening in the heart. Is the atrial tissue are continually saying, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, go. So the rhythm can be regular or irregular. Rate 250 to 450 for the atrial. The ventricle rate should be normal, but it can also be slower or faster depending on the conduction rate, how many atrial flutter waves to QRS waves. Now the causes of atrial flutter should be no surprise because they're the same causes for atrial fibrillation. We've got hyperthyroidism. That shortened refractory period is really a key feature here. Structural damage, coronary artery disease, decreased blood flow, fibrotic tissue, decreased elasticity, um, history of COPD, so the oxygenation, 
if there's been a past MI and we've got injured or irritable tissue. Treatment. The primary goal again is to maintain that ventricular firing rate at less than 100 beats per minute while investigating that underlying cause. Again, we have our beta blockers and our calcium channel blockers and anticoagulants to reduce the risk of stroke. Other medications you might see here would be digoxin, deltiazem, verapamil, metoprolol. Now the same thing here for atrial flutter as atrial fibrillation. Synchronized cardioversion is suitable when the onset of atrial flutter is less than 48 hours. You do want to administer an anticoagulant ahead of time. And then of course, we're still searching for that underlying cause so we can treat the cause to hopefully restore our electrical conduction system into a normal sinus rhythm. In our next video, we're gonna be looking at supraventricular tachycardia. And this is our last rhythm for this course.